Hey there everybody, my name is uh, William Nager and uh, I've been a plant-based chef for over 30 years and vegan plant-based for 36 years now. And I first went vegan back in 1984. Well, the reason I, I became vegan was kind of like as an experiment. I was just having a lot of changes happen in my life at the time. I had just give up uh, using alcohol and drugs and when I was going to those meetings, you know, the AA meetings, the NA meetings, I noticed everyone was just using coffee and cigarettes in super addictive amounts. So I just, I, I thought, you know, this can't be the way to go. I don't feel good. You know, this recovery thing ain't paying off. And a friend turned me on to being a vegan in one of the first big health food stores. And that was down in South Florida called the Unicorn Village. And I met a couple people inside that looked really vibrant, alive, and healthy, and asked them about their diet. And they said they were on a vegan diet. And I knew nothing about it. I didn't know that was, you know, I thought it was just giving up meat, like red meat, and found out it was fish, dairy, everything. You know, you, you go off all animal products. So I tried it as an experiment just to feel better. I wanted to get back to feeling athletic, feeling vibrantly alive. And they were pitching that, that, hey, you're gonna feel great, but boy, the first beginning of, of that wasn't that great. You know, I went through detoxing. I was a, a drug using young kid, partying, drinking, you know, doing everything I can, putting Burger King and McDonald's into my body every minute, you know? And so I had to go through the detox period. But I had people around me that told me that was gonna happen. They told me you're probably not gonna feel that great. So, so back in 84, gave it a try, went through about a six month period of like uh, sticking with it. And then all of a sudden I felt great, like super great actually. At first, the detoxing period didn't feel that great. You know, there was a lot of stuff that my liver was trying to cleanse out of it. But afterwards, one of the things that happened is having really bad acne as all through my, you know, uh, 13, 14, 15, all the way up into 20, 21, my skin became beautiful after that. Like really all cleared up. And, you know, a lot of people would say, oh, well, that's just you getting older. You know, you got past adolescence. Well, I'm 21, 22, adolescence, okay. And uh, I was able to get back to being an athlete again. As a 13, 14, 15 year old, I was really active you know, in, in sports. And I was able to jump right back into it and, and really exceed, like in running and, and outdoor sports and, you know, de definitely distance sports. I got good at that. You know, I was running in 10Ks and 5Ks every single weekend. So I was back to being an athlete again. And, and you know what? Another thing, I didn't sleep very well on like the junk food diet and I was able to get a really good night's rest all the time and wake up on shorter sleep, wake up and be like, you know, up and vibrant again. Uh, the third thing that was good, I, you know, as a young person, and you know, some of you may think this is a little crude and stuff like that, I wasn't able to go to the bathroom. I couldn't do a number two except for every other or every third day. And I just thought that was normal. You know, you get kind of clogged up and out comes this boulder rock thing. And once I went vegan, smooth move all the time. There's a famous tea called Smooth Move that's been around for years. Uh, and I mean, I was back to normal. Get up right in the morning, afternoon. So it, it really shifted my life to being much more cleansed and smooth. Well, for me personally, the most important reason is uh, the love and care of all living beings. And, you know, it may not have been at first, it was an experiment for my own personal health, but then it became that I actually have, to, I really have like no animal fears me at all. I can walk around this planet and be in harmony with those animals. Of course, you know, driving on highways, we're taking away, you know, the property of, of where these animals live, but none of them have to fear me for wanting to hunt them down, kill them and consume them. And that really meant a lot for me, especially later on now in my life, wanting to be more of like someone who's a messenger of love or sharing love, it made a thousand percent sense that love would be on a plant-based diet. So uh, that's the main one. The, the other main reasons is health, being vibrantly alive, feeling great, having energy, you know, uh, the youthfulness that I have about me. You know, at 58 years old, I just feel great. So it's paying off, you know, 35, 36 years, it's really paying off now and I love it because the dividends are coming in and I'm seeing a lot of my friends around me not feeling so great and I just keep feeling great. I wish they could too. I really wish they would catch on to it, so. 
the statistics really say that the plant-based diet, it would be one of the biggest shifts in our environment. The, the research on like one person going plant-based, how much of an effect they have. So just think if we can get 30, 40, 50% of our world's population to do that, we would handle a lot of the, the issues we're going on from health and health care to resources to pollution. You know, all these things would, would really uh, be affected in a positive way by that. Not just the way everyone feeling better and feeling more confident about their own life, but we would actually be making a difference in this planet just by eating differently. The way I encourage others, you know, at, at the beginning I was much more into activism, going out to protests, going out to rodeos and, and, and factory farming places and being involved in it. I noticed, you know, we, if we didn't get the media coverage, we didn't really make any effect at all, you know, other than we seemed to anger a lot of people. So I decided, let's go in the direction of feeding people. Instead of telling someone what not to do, I said, try this put that out in front of the person. So, so I started opening up uh, vegan businesses and made it very affordable because that was the other side that I was seeing that the single mom with two kids, kids couldn't shop at Whole Foods. You know, she would just go, no way, I can, I, you know, $8 burgers and things like that. No way, I can't do that. I'm going to keep going to Burger King and McDonald's. So I wanted to offer solutions that would have directly affect the person's budget along with their health and lifestyle. So I do it by usually by introducing people to food. And now I do it more through uh, letting people know that, you know, as someone who wants to support love and sharing love and kindness and unity, that a plant-based diet is one of the ways to do it, to show your love, not just for yourself and for animals, but the whole planet. Collectively, you are showing love toward by going at least more in the direction toward plant-based or always keeping that as a target. Can I chip away at the stone a little more? Because you know, we know not everyone's going to go right away and just say, hey, I'm vegan now, I'm plant-based 100%. They're going to chip away and hopefully they feel better. So that's a, a big part of what's going on with me today on sharing it. When I opened up the uh, uh, vegan home delivery service, the first one was called Vegin Out and then Eden Out and sold about eight of them around the country between the ones I opened and the ones I sold. And each of them had different names. I always left the freedom for the owners to create their own recipes and styles. And so my way was how to get the food into people and how to make it affordable. And that's really going to be the next step. Whoever opens up a plant-based fast food chain and is able to get those numbers near Burger King and McDonald's will do amazing because then that single mom with two kids is going to go, hey, I'll give it a try. And if the food tastes great, you got them. So just someone create it. We're going to be working on it. So uh, we need everyone out there because it will be the next, probably one of the biggest businesses out there, along with if we can get our medical profession to start being able to prescribe plant-based meals. If insurance companies would back that and say, we're going to let you prescribe that, that would be a billion dollar industry. Plant-based medicine post-surgery or you know, for different ailments, and they were prescribable by doctors. Holy cow, we're talking the next biggest industry in America and then the world. Just think of the value of a thousand patients just right now in this area coming out of the, you know, our local hospitals and doctors are saying, all right, you had cancer, you had a heart attack, here's the meal plans. You're going to have to be on this for six months. It's taken care of by insurance and the rest of your family gets a discount price. So instead of paying, you know, medicine, you just cut down their, their food bill completely cut down their food bill for the next six months while showing them what a difference it would make. So that, that's really a big one there. That's going to take work though. And we're going to need to probably work on the pharmaceutical industry because as soon as they see something that uh, interferes with their profit margin, so may have to uh, make a deal with the devil, you know, <laughs> and say, come on in, we'll let you be part of this, you know, so. As we're seeing with cannabis and all these other industries that have to have the big guys are now coming in and wanting to take over. So money, money seems to be king in, in our society no matter what. I actually, from what I understand, and, and I used to deal with the, uh, the Ornish program the, with Dean Ornish. And when I first opened up one of my food services down in Fort Lauderdale, we would deliver to all their patients that had graduated you know, out of his program because there was no follow-up. So right there is an example of how it works. You come in, you get your treatment, and you're going to need the regular doctor system. So, you know, they're going to come in and help you quickly. But the follow-up is 
order food. So we used to deliver to almost all their patients when they came out, as long as they were still living in that area, because many traveled down to Fort Lauderdale. So Dean Ornish may already have that going right now, where it's, it's a program that your follow-up, covered by insurance, is plant-based prescribed meals. How awesome would that be? Get your food instead of get just throwing a pill down your throat. You get like dinners, and that heals you. That's that's the world we should be living in, you know. And that should be the lowest price of everything, and the highest price should be the toxic food, you know, the the, the food that's doing the most damage to a society. But we're so backwards with this, you know. Organics the most expensive, and chemical foods, the ch- you know cheap stuff. We're, we're working on it, chipping away at that stone. Well, some of the challenge in the early days, we're talking the, the mid 80s, you know, and I'm like a rock and roller and I, I loved going out at night and going to concerts. There was nothing to eat. You know, just ice cream alone. All we had was ice bean and rice dream back then. And, you know, one was real pasty and the other had not much taste, you know, so there weren't a lot of choices back then. I was fortunate because I worked at the Unicorn Village. It was one of the first supermarkets of health food, you know, down in, in South Florida. So I was fortunate in that area and I had, I started surrounding myself with other plant-based people, you know, and really getting involved in the activism. That's probably one of the great sides of activism is you, you're around the other people. You're not alone. But again, like all my other plant-based friends, when you go to a, a Thanksgiving dinner or something like that, you're the only one. So I started bringing loads of food with me. And when I told everyone at the, they're like, hey, here's the, the imitation turkey, here's you know, the, all these other stuffings and things like that, and I put a lot of work into it, they actually ended up liking that better. Especially once I said, hey, you're gonna walk away and not feel so tired, healthy, and lethargic all night. They would clean my food out. Uh, maybe the family was just being nice to me, but, <laughs> but it, uh, you know, the way to get people is show the best of that stuff. If you got a new friend out there, don't turn them on to just an average like you know tofu sandwich or something like. Give them the best stuff that you know. Show them the good stuff that you've trialed and errored to get to that. So, and then you'll save them from those challenges. But massively different from thirty some years ago to today. We have so much offerings out there for plant based food. I was fortunate where no one really challenged me, or I didn't have like a cynical uh, family member making fun of me or anything like that. Uh, just a couple friends, you know, like I said, I was involved in a recovery program back then. And, you know, I would jog to a meeting at night. And, you know, I had one friend who was 350 pounds telling me, oh, here comes Mr. Sticks and Twigs, you know, like, because that's what I was, he thought I was eating all the time. So when I would go out with them at night, you know, they would all go out for coffee afterwards. There was nothing for me to eat. But I got to control the conversation when the food came because <laughs> they're all busy eating. And I'm like, hey, what's the next topic now? So a lot of times, it, it, you know, I've, I solved that by bringing my own little pouches of food with me, order something simple like a salad, and then dump my food on the plate. As long as you tip your waiter, waitress, they don't care. They really don't care. Just throw some money that way, you know, give them an extra 10 or something not to say anything to the boss, and you can eat out anywhere. You got to bring your own food. Yeah, I remember those early days of being the only person so many times at the table, you know. And, uh, oh, and a a lot of times I kept quiet. You know, if I was reading the crowd, it was going to be a little bit like, you know, like sometimes I didn't want to become the topic of the table. But then there would always be someone, hey, William, uh, is there anything on the menu? They would say it real loud so everybody else could hear it. And then all of a sudden, now I'm the attention. You know, asking me about my diet and where do you get protein from? Where do you get all this from? And since I had studied about that right from the beginning, you know, and took the nine course, which is the uh, National Institute of Nutritional Education, and they taught all about plant-based food, I knew my stuff. You know, so they didn't really come out with me with these questions like B12 and protein that I didn't have the answers immediately to and sound like I knew them real well and confident in my answers. So it's, it's real important. Become confident in your answers. That helps people shift over too that you know what you're talking about. Man, we have so much evidence on our side, so much evidence that's been gathered worldwide from whole societies, you know, that says go in this direction. You will make not only your life better, but the whole world better. Let me think, regrets. Uh, Yeah, you know, back when I first heard about Apple, yeah, that I did in that first week, someone told me, and if I had put a thousand in, I'd be a trillionaire right now. No. <laughs> really, no, you know, that, you know, 
I don't really have any. You know, I chose to move on from doing plant-based food, you know, in the food service business, in the home delivery, to go into more writing and doing other things in foraging, which I love to do, and go out for forage for mushrooms, and live more of a life about promoting peace and love in the world. So, uh, you know, I can't really say I have regrets about anything that's about being vegan at all. I'm glad I was fortunate enough, like at 21 years old, just turning 21, that I found out about it. And then a friend turned me on and then said, just give it a try for one month. He actually challenged me. One month. See what happens after one month. Opposite regrets, I'm just like enthralled that I got this, I, got, I learned this so early. I mean, it's like a blessing in my life. And one more thing, you know, when everything else is going, if everything else is going bad in my life, I stop and look at this one topic and it, it makes me feel better that no animal has to fear me. I'm not putting this big indentation on the planet or being a burden to our planet and our society. It, it'll literally snap me out of, a, of a depression some days. So uh, it, it's a good thing, you know, I, no regrets at all. I didn't know about it at all. You know, when I first turned on it, it was just not in my circle of party and rock and roll friends, you know, that wise guys, you know, just, you know, uh, but I was an avid reader and I wanted to know a lot. I loved documentaries. Even when I'd go to the library, I'd watch those on the old VCR tapes. I'd love, I'd go just to the library to watch documentaries so I could pick mine. So I uh, didn't have that circle of friends. And, but, you know, lot when the, I'm a very logical and reasonable person. And I believe in logic as, and, and, you know, the scientific method. So when I learned, it was definitely backed by science. So if it makes sense to me, I'm going to go for it. I, you know, I can't even remember, plus it's 36 years ago, I can't remember even hearing about it other than maybe like in the back of a magazine where, the, you know, they'd have that, uh, the, the protein powder weeder magazines or something like that where the little weak vegetarian person, you know, is real scrawny and then he takes protein powders and eats meat and gets big. That all I remember is being depicted as weaklings. You know, and, and still to this day, you watch a sitcom or anything like that and the vegan is the weird person. You know, or the person who's a troublemaker as in, you know, always causing problems or has all these high demands, you know, and, and I, you know, maybe that's true, you know, that you're, you ask a lot of questions at restaurants to find out ingredients, but that's our right to know what we're putting in our body, so. But was there ever a time that you felt like there's no way I could do it before you tried it? No, no, because I think when I learned about it and my friend challenged me, I admired this friend for who they were, and I was right at the perfect time in my life. I was looking for things that were different, from this party lifestyle to being clean and this sober and everything like that. I was looking for it. So I was like, what's new? What's, like, how can I make myself a better person? All right, I'll try this. I'll try this. You know, that's why you know, running came in. I was never a runner. I went on to run for 35, right up to you know, this week, running you know, as a distance runner. So um, it's just in a perfect timing that I was open. It's kind of like when religion catches people at their lowest. You know, they get someone out of jail and you know, they find God or Jesus at that point. You know, I guess I was at that point you know, and, and just searching. So nutrient-wise, no, because I was fortunate that I worked in a health food store, took courses, and really read a lot. So I knew that uh, one, uh, one plant-based multiple vitamin took care of it. In fact, it made my food from just average you know, plant-based food to high test gas. You know, this was like you know, super octane gasoline because I now was never without taking that multiple vitamin. Like I remember Solgar's VM75, probably 15 years, took that once a day, at least 300 days of the year. So I guarantee that, but protein wise, nah, I, I learned all about the protein myth right from the beginning. That, you know, uh, the dairy issue, you know, things about dairy and stuff like that. Nah, I learned all about dairy and the manipulation of their marketing to get us to think we needed a product when actually it was completely the opposite. We didn't need that product at all. In fact, it would be hurting us. So uh, I never really feared about it. And the experimentation was working. You know, as I'm feeling better and better, I'm going, how can, how can what these friends that are coming up to me and challenging me be right when I now have five, six, seven, eight, ten years under my belt and I'm still feeling great? So, you know, the evidence was in my lifestyle. 
I still take the multiple vitamin just for the sake of like, like I said, I want it to make my food into uh, super octane food. So that's really what it was. Never had my body lacking nutrients, but I have included like much more medicinal mushrooms into my life, like chaga, reishi, you know, lion's mane, these types here. I really was looking at what is nature's best immune builder. And it was these, these, you know, these tree mushrooms seem to be the great, especially reishi and chaga. So I, I happen to live in a region in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, where it grows here. You know, it's on the tree. So I go out, harvest that, and you make teas up, make tinctures. And uh, that was just because I wanted my immune system to be able to fight things off. During this COVID period, yeah, let's have your body totally ready to take on you know, the, the viruses and things that are coming. You know, in the natural food industry about the viruses, we've all been predicting these viruses would come if we keep up this toxic lifestyle in our society. It, it, it bothers me that some of my natural friends act like they didn't know it when we've been talking about it for years. Like, oh, it ain't real, it's, it's, it's created by governments. It's like, we said this was gonna happen. All the experts said this would happen if we keep this up. We are gonna create major diseases that are gonna ravish our society. Well, here they come, just like we said. So ideally for me, you know, like it's, it's different periods of my life. When I'm a, I did three years of 100% raw food, it was all about greens. You know, ideally it would always be getting greens into my diet, but you know, I go through long periods where I'll just be eating more, you know, the comfort food of plant-based. You know, winter definitely seems to be more heavier stuff. You know, I don't have issues with soy, you know, I, the soy always has to be organic. Uh, but you know, I'll eat starches and all those things. Because of my athleticism, it really pays off. You know, my athleticism actually includes when I go out foraging deep in the forest. That's like a super workout as my work performance day. It's 100% about staying plant-based. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, there's days like once or twice a year where something slips in that I didn't read the label this one time. I assumed it didn't have something in it. And then, oh, shoot, there's whey again. No way. It's always that whey issue. You know, or there's some dairy product or like an egg white. And I was like, oh, you got to be more vigilant, you know, William, on this. But, uh, you know, staying plant-based and, you know, definitely going through cleansing periods. I also uh, believe in fasting. I just had finished one. You know, I'm doing a, a three-day fast. I'm now going to get an, another three-dayer. But that's even more important than me, fasting now. I've always felt that that was one of the really great health remedies. Even our, all of our sacred teachers of the world taught about fasting all through, historically. So it's one of the great uh, medicines for our bodies to give your body a break for a minute. Let it just cleanse on its own, and it's really great. So... So like my thing is I'm always trying out different stuff. As a plant-based chef, I want to just try out all the different things. Like I love Miyoko's cheeses, you know, Kite Hill. You know, so those are like those more dense, heavy, nut-based, coconut-based ones, but I love them. And so I'll go through periods where I'm eating really, really healthy. I'd say this is probably not the healthy time, more heavy food. And But then I know, hey, I got to go through cleansing time. I got to go through like just eating kale, you know, kale salads and stuff like that for a longer period. So, uh, you know, I feel what my body's doing a lot. And, uh, you know, and sometimes I'm being a little easier on myself. What's the easiest to get? Here in Asheville, we've got like a store that does discount vegan food and it. it's really awesome. It's called Hopi. And they, uh, you know, they get all this stuff that's just on the edge of outdated, but man, I'll get like, uh, you know, a vegan cream cheese for a buck. <laughs> so I love that. So, so, uh, you know, there's nothing that I'm really focusing on right now. So, so my goal is to go back to raw food again. So that'll happen real soon. The healthiest food to eat is, is dark greens that absolute above all in nutrient density, your dark greens, mustard greens, collard greens, kale, spinach, that's the way to go, you know, and then sprouts, you know, I got to meet Vic, uh, Victoria Skolvinskis and, you know, it's all about sprouting, live enzyme food, so, you know, and, and I really like now doing uh, broccoli sprouts for the, uh, you know, for how great they are anti-cancer, you know, uh, you know, and that's, again, Claim, like I'll throw that out, Claim has the science behind it. It isn't just me saying, oh, go vegan, it'll stop cancer. Oh man, there's so many factors in cancer and the paint that's around us and the, you know, the stuff coming off, outgassing off your carpet. It's about, uh, life is really about living as cleansed as you can, you know. And if you don't do it all the time, have periods of cleansing. 
Yeah. And I don't mean like Oprah, who becomes a vegan for one month and it's right back to her other diet. You know, it's stay consistent with the plant based side for a while. Give it a try for a while. And I mean six months at least. See what happens because that's the detox. You're going to go through like two detoxes in six months. Stuff's going to come out of your body. Mucus, you may break out a little. You may have stinky breath and stinky armpits. Your body is getting rid of all those stored toxins. So go for it. You'll like it. But maybe not at first. <laughs> I'd say the, the easiest way to learn right now is on YouTube. There are a lot of plant-based channels out there. All right, with chefs showing you how to make quick and simple meals. At the same time, Whole Foods and all these other chains that are out there, you know, there's Sprouts in America, in the United States, there's the Natural Grocer, you know, they're a little more discounted. Uh, but all the supermarkets have a whole mess of plant-based food now. A place like Kroger's has a section in the store, a health food section. But if you don't have a friend around you or a group that you can join and you live out in the middle of nowhere, even Walmart has the organic you know, vegetarian food there. So go online, start listening to people on there. You know, we, we right now have in the palm of our hand right now, the library of Alexandria, the world library is in here. You can learn anything on here from thousands of people, especially in this world of plant-based. It's all on your phone or your laptop or your desktop. Go there and learn, look it up. And that'll show your commitment. You know, the more you look into it, it kind of shows that you're really serious about this. You're serious about being healthier and making a difference. You know, if it's just nonchalant and it's a fad, I'm for that too. If I can get one person one meal, just one meal, that's better than not. You know, that's better than another animal dying for someone's taste buds. For me personally, I don't really like, um, I, I use YouTube because there's a thousand people I've never even heard of that are now online teaching. So like when I was younger, like my first cookbook was the Moosewood Cookbook. They had vegan recipes in it, but there was really like not even a vegan book back 30 years ago. Then Survival in the 21st Century by Victoris Kolvinskis was all about sprouting in the Hippocrates Center. So I, I had those at the beginning. Now I just love going on YouTube and watching a video. You know, watching the statistical information that's presented by people on there. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure people say that they, they want to be fact-checked. That's a big part in our world. We're noticing in our modern world right, right now a lot of claims are made, but you can fact-check anybody. And the one thing I love about plant-based is that, like I've said earlier, you know, the statistics speak for themselves. The evidence is there. The scientific method is proving that this is the best lifestyle, not just diet, but lifestyle for the planet. I'm not up on like who's the best medical approach. Like, you know, oh, Dr. Clapper was a big one for me. I met him a bunch of times, you know. So Dr. Clapper, you know, he was a, um, he was a pediatric doctor, I think, at the beginning, right? And he was the doctor for the uh, River Phoenix's family, the Phoenix family. And they were the first like Hollywood celebrities. The whole family was plant-based. Joaquin Phoenix, as you probably know him now. Uh, so he was their, their uh, doctor and he wrote some books about it and uh, it definitely shot, uncovered a lot of the uh, misconceptions that were presented by doctors. Here's the, one of the problems with doctors. They're not trained in that. So they're not going to teach you something they're not trained in and they're not an expert in. We got to get that into our, into our education systems, you know, uh, where that's brought in. Critical food theory, you know. <laughs> You know, critical, critical uh, diet theory would be uh, a good showing like, hey, here's the bad diets, here's the good ones. Where it's just, you know, the food industry is so lobbied by some really powerful entities out there to, to make sure fast food and junk food and the, the, the 80, 90% of the stuff that's in your grocery store is really bad for us. You know, because it feeds another industry. It feeds the pharmaceutical and medical industry. You know, one, the, the enemy of a, of a mechanic is a car that never breaks down. So what would the enemy of a doctor be? People who never need them. Best doctor in the world is the one that wants to put themselves out of business. You know, that is willing to lose a client for 20 years of health by recommending lifestyle changes and then, then not getting a penny from them for the next 20 years. That's the kind of doctor you want that's willing to see your health over their wealth. 
So I would say the number one common reason that people give up uh, veganism is friends, friends and families, relationships. I would say the number one I've seen literally is uh, the more intimate relationships. When someone gets a wife, lover, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, and they aren't doing it. You know, they're on a different diet and they go, I guess, to stay in the relationship, make the other person happy or have more things in common. But that would be number one. Also misinformation, a lot of misinformation from the meat and dairy industry out there. You know, uh, we keep getting these protein diet after protein diet with a new name, you know, the South Beach diet, the, you know, the keto diet, the, uh, you know, caveman diet. I don't know, just anything about eating meat with a new name rehashed every five to 10 years. And then the results come in from each one of those and the, the clients of those books and diets don't can't stick with it very long you know so that that talks them out of it you know what do we have like right now it's like bone broth oh you got to have bone broth or you know you're going to be lacking all these nutrients from the bone of an animal it's like really i always try to think of that vividly like really you have to like soak and eat a, like the bone broth of an animal Ooh, you know it's as bad as like turkey gravy <laughs> so <laughs> So anyway. Now you mentioned some of the challenges you had were the way your body detoxed and, and maybe I think some of that's going on too where people, they're not oh, accustomed yeah. to yeah. eating healthy foods and then... You're right. I, I, you know, as I mentioned with my going through, I was lucky that I had a, a gentleman, uh, Art Dilworth, who worked in the Unicorn Village who was vegan. He was a trainer of like uh, Miami Dolphin athletes and he was with me. He told me that I was gonna have this kind of detox thing come up. Oh, you're gonna feel crummy, you're gonna get a headache for a couple of days, you're, you know, the liver's just letting stuff out into the bloodstream and it's gotta be reprocessed, so everything's gonna feel lethargic and heavy. But he walked me through it. I mean, I actually felt like really, because I, I was, right in my first six months, I included periodic fasting in there because I wanted to quicken the process up. I started to become a runner. Everything was like to hurry this up for me because I wanted to get right to feeling better. So I'm lucky. So it's just realizing, and that's why going online and learning about that, there are going to be some effects, but they're great effects. Like if you can think of the detoxing in a positive way, that stuff, that stuff that could be cancer causing and hurt you later on is now out of your body. Yay! Get up off the toilet and go, yeah! You know, when something peels off your intestine. I remember during one of my fasts in my first six months, it's like intestinal like film came out. And my, my friend Art said, oh, oh, yeah, it's just your body peeling off that, that toxic stuff that's inside your intestinal system starting to come out. It's like, yes, it's not in me anymore. Not stuck inside me like glue anymore. So I feel great. Still to this day, man, I get up and just great bathroom movements. Woohoo! <laughs> Nothing like a good poop story from a vegan. <laughs> and our shit smells better than everyone else's. I got to tell you that for sure their body will be cleansing and they'll feel that uncomfortability because as mucus is coming out of your body, you think you're getting sick. No, you were getting sick the whole time before. You're cleansing now. So when they have that reaction, like they're feeling sticky and toxic and maybe they even break out, you have to look at that as the good sign. That's your body cleansing. Get through it and you get years of better health afterwards. But the cleanse is really important. Don't forget, if you were eating Burger King and stuff with all those chemicals in it and all that junk, holy cow, and all those food dyes and additives, man, your body, first chance your body gets, it's gonna to try to get rid of it. Let it. But many people stop then. Oh, I didn't feel good. Oh, there wasn't a variety of food to eat because they just ate uh, an iceberg lettuce salad with tomato. Go to the places that are making and specialize in this food. But so much better now. You have so many choices. You have like great vegan ice creams, enchiladas, pizzas, you know. You know, I worked on movie sets. First plant-based uh, craft service ever in Hollywood called Healthy Hollywood. We were doing diet pizzas and we'd add more stir-fried vegetables on top. We had Miyoko's cheeses on you know, organic crackers and fooled or uh, say surprised the crew, two, 300 people on the crew used to eating junk food. And they were like, they, they thought they, they had done something good. And the production, you know, head of production was buying them bonus stuff, you know, but we fooled them all the time, you know, that they thought they were eating regular cheese and stuff like that. We did have to ask about, uh, you know, uh, if people had any allergies and we always list that there. So, but uh, it's easy these days, so much easier.
you know, when I was had uh, eaten out and people would order our weekly vegan meal plans, it was like Meals on Wheels meets uh, plant-based food. And so, you know, all of a sudden, uh, I get a letter in or an email, someone saying that, you know, I was going in for heart surgery. We went on your meal plan. My wife told me about it. I've been on it now five months. And now the doctor says, I don't need surgery. And it would just come out of the blue. It'd be like, and I want to thank you. You changed my life. And I would always write back, you made the choice. We were just offering a service. But they would always be like that. And I'd probably have a hard time accepting you know, this gratitude. But same time, they made the choice and they stuck with it. And it showed that. And, and you know, through the years of doing it, I probably have 20 letters like that. Yeah, I've gotten that said that, you know, and, you know, I had a situation with my mom where she was, you know, diabetic and having all these problems and went plant based. hundred percent. I moved down to and helped her made dinners for her and everything like that and showed her went to all the stores to show her what to shop. Because that's important to know what to buy in the supermarkets. Uh, so if you have a vegan friend that maybe can show you, yeah, that, to ask for a little tour of what's good and bad. So anyway, I got my mom on it. She goes to her, her, uh, her doctor who's treating her for diabetes and, you know, it was getting pretty bad there. Uh, he says, you know, I'm thinking of taking you off insulin. You're going to be my first client ever. And he kind of was in denial that it was her meal plan. He just says, oh, there's a one out of 100,000 or whatever. Like gave her a statistic and you're that one. And I knew otherwise that this was making a difference. The thing is, my mom had a, a tragedy happen after that, and she went back on and even told me, she says, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, even after those results, the food and the addiction to the food is still that attractive. It's hard, you know. But I just want to be there with my mom and have her, you know, spend whatever quality time I can with her. So I don't want it to always be this battle of, you know, try this, because she got pretty defensive about it too. And I think that was her being defensive about that she knew she hurt herself. You know, she knew that this wasn't good, you know, and it was by her choice. But it's, you have to watch, you know, uh, when people are emotional eaters, that can happen. You know, like um, uh, many people, they'll have a bad time and that's when they eat the worst food is when some tragedy happens in their life or there's someone's causing major stress. Like in my mom, my mom's life, someone was causing a lot of stress in her life. And, you know, she went back. But, you know, the thing is, no matter what you do out there with anyone, love them where they're at and be an example for them to come in that direction. Because if you're way up on a mountaintop yelling to someone way down there how great it is up there, you know, they're, they're going to, I can't hear you. Go down and meet them. Go down and take their hand. You know, offer help. You know, and then walk them up that mountain with you because it's a hard climb. You know, they have, they have 30, 40, some people 30, 40, 50 years of eating this American diet. So it's going to take, you know, like dedication. It's going to take you just keep it up. And you never know. I've had so many people tell me that, you know, I bothered them years ago. They remembered it. I have an ex-girlfriend who 10 years later, after we broke up, said, I went for it. I finally decided to become plant-based. She became like an activist. She's sending me all this stuff that, you know, like about factory farming and stuff like that. And, and I was like, great, yeah. So you never know that when that seed that's planted is going to sprout later on, you know? Maybe, and a lot of times the fire is an ailment. You know how some seeds germinate in fire? Well, that's what happens with us a lot. So the fire is they get a, you know, they find out they have a major illness and they're willing to try then. I wish more people would try before they get the major ailments and all the things that happen to their bodies later on that's hard to reverse, you know. But it's, it's amazing how many things do reverse, how bad someone can be health-wise. And a year later, they're like, I can't believe the way I feel now, so... Nope, nope. Uh, I've even asked, like, say I went on one of those reality shows and they wanted me to eat bugs or something like that. Nope, I'd be the person who stood there and said, I'm off the show. Vote me out right now, if that was the rule. Uh, I, I also have learned a lot about survival skills of what I can eat out in the wilderness that's plant-based. Also, I know I can go 35 days on a water fast. So I've got probably a good 25 days out in the middle of the wilderness or not eating anything except good water. And all you need is one purifier or a fire to boil it. But I know I could go a long time. So there's not much to do that. But say someone said, I'm going to kill a member of your family. And if you would eat this, yeah, no problem. I put that right in my mouth to save a, f a friend or family member's life. You know, uh, that's on that person. But if I was able to pull them out of the situation, who cares? I'll just stick my finger down my throat later on, you know? And, and it isn't that I think less of the animal, but right in front of me is a, the, uh, you know, a death that I can stop. 
You know, I can stop that. But, you know, that would be all on the person threatening me that. So, because you know, people used to make up those scenarios. What about this and what about that? You know, one of my favorite ones is like when uh, they saw this thing of like where they hooked the wire up to the plant leaf. And so the meter, they added a noise. The guy added a sound of like, ee, ee, like that sounds like a scream. So they think the plant's screaming. So they'll say to me, that goes, well, you're killing a carrot. So if you want a really good answer to that one, when someone thinks they got you by saying, oh, well, you're killing carrots, you know, because they heard about that, say, well, obviously you have to be vegan because if the death of a carrot is bothering you, it must be destroying you for another living animal with eyes and a consciousness to be dying. So just throw it right back at them. Like, well, you obviously have to be vegan then. Because this, oh, no, no, I'm just putting that on you. And I go, well, that's, that's not cool. You know, so just always... Give people, be well informed. It really helps a lot with that. Because people are going to try to prove you wrong all the time. I like that it's been 36 years now because it's like, yeah, I'm 58 years old and I'll go run right out this door and do pretty much any athletic event I want. You know, I, I slow down. I don't want to injure my body like I did when I was younger, but everything's available to me. Everything that I did at, t at 18 and 20 is available to this body today. Well, you know, I hurt my knee on the Appalachian Trail. That'll act up every now and then, but I think it actually is great because of my diet that I didn't get like, you know, a lot of times when you have an injury, what is it? You get like a plaque buildup and calcium buildups on those old injuries and they get worse and worse and worse. You know, recovery rates, that's another thing that the statistics on vegans, uh, recovery rates when they do get injured or, or in a car accident or their agility to jump out of the way. You're like, say, say you're a healthy plant-based lifestyle person. You weigh like what you're supposed to weigh. Right, and then there's this 400, 300 pound person, and a car, a bus is coming at him. You're probably gonna have a way better chance of jumping out of the way, way better. So there's another positive for that. You can jump out of the way of buses. <laughs> Yay! I'm gonna add that to my list. <laughs> oh, well, let food be thy medicine is probably one of my favorites. I think Einstein has a couple. Uh, a Gandhi, how you can judge a country by the way it treats its animals. You know, those. Uh, you know, a lot of times I have to double check to make sure because our quotes get adopted by other people so you don't know where their root origin is. You can show love through how you eat would be a quote, like for me. Uh, food be thy medicine because you can heal yourself without all that pharmaceutical stuff. You know, you can pretty much take anything out unless you've gone way too far. The one I love is, uh, you know, love is my religion. I love that, so. By the way, did you know that the, they wrote in the Vulcans are plant-based? It's the most logical logical way to eat so he wrote it in it was only in one episode one time that it was hinted at that well no the the later one enterprise she says it all the time so there's a vulcan first officer again and she's real pretty they made her voluptuous that they always do one you know person in there that has to be supermodel looking and everything like that but the woman who uh played it in the the show enterprise one of their later on series they said it all the time that she's plant-based but, hey, logical society, you know. Where I went to my life after uh, many, many years of uh, uh, going out there and having an effect on our society is offering food. And, you know, at the same time, I had become an atheist. I didn't really believe in any of the religions of the world. You know, Buddhism isn't really a religion. It's an inner practice, you know, uh, even though the people worship, you know, Buddha. I don't think they're supposed to, though. You know, it was all about the inside job. But other than that, I came to that out of all the world religions, there's only one that made sense, and that's the religion of love, of being kind, compassionate, and caring to not only other human beings, but to all life forms on our planet and to the, plan the living planet itself. That really is where my life went to, where I decided, well, I want to get into that field because being plant-based and vegan is, is under that umbrella. I made this board up years ago, like, what would love do? And right on it, you know, it's like, you know, eat organic plant-based food. Use solar energy. You know, but right away, be kind and compassionate to each other. So this was, I created this board like 10 years ago, you know, about this. But, uh, you know, include it because that would be part of it. Because it's more than just being nice. It's, it's your actions in your day, you know, where you shop and everything like that. You know, my next goal is, is electric vehicle. But how do I get an electric vehicle that's also made compassionately because man, so many of the ingredients in our cars come from slave labor. 
They may be assembled here, but they came from poor countries. So there's a lot of work we have to do as a, as a society to be loved. So, so that's why I went into more of an organization I'm creating called Love Strong USA. And it's about us using the power of love and kindness to change our world through marketing. And the way we do this, I make yard signs. I make these really nice yard signs, and you know, I get them. They're made out of re they're reclaimed wood from construction sites. Here's one that says, uh, uh, share love. And I sell them like at like really low cost to people, or I give them away. If people don't have money, I'll just give it to them. But to put these in front of their yards. And I've been hanging them all over Asheville, and just recently went across the United States and hung 150 of them, about 140 across the United States to California. So it's how we can market kindness and, and love toward each other. And guess what happens? When we really start becoming a loving society, plant-based will be automatic. It'll just be like, oh, well, that makes sense. That, that sounds like love. That seems to be the loving choice. So, and one of my favorites, the one I, when I'll stand out on the street is like, love is always the answer. So, so I went in that direction because I wanted to encompass the bigger umbrella picture. You know, the, 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 what is the blanket over our whole society? And as we know recently, you know, in the United States after the elections and after COVID, we have seen a divide like I've never experienced. I may not have been around during the civil rights movement, I was born right in 63, I was actually born just before uh, Kennedy was shot. And, um, you know, I didn't get to experience that, but many of the people who went through it say it's that same energy again, that same divide, that same separation and, and tribalism. You know, and I know many of you out there are seeing it. So if we can share with others to, to be nicer to each other, to look at, look at the best in people instead of the worst always, and what their differences are. No, you want to look at the, the same things that you have in common. Uh, so that would be my message down today, you know. And if that happens in your life, that you decide to be a more loving person in practice, plant-based lifestyle, veganism happens as a logical, like, no kidding, you know, part of your lifestyle. So that's where I'm at today. So love strong, USA, then the world.